we're at Bodine's Seafood Restaurant and I'm standing in front of the seafood market where I'll be getting the ingredients for this week's lesson. Steaming! Now let's go meet Chef Tim. Hi, I'm Remy and I started cooking when I was four. When I turned 10, I learned all I could from my home kitchen. So I partnered with Oklahoma State's Culinary Arts Program. Now I travel to the best chefs around, learning the curriculum and techniques. Then seek out the freshest, most healthy ingredients to create dishes to be judged by the chefs that inspired them. Just call me the Culinary Kid. Chef Tim, tell me about the steaming test. Today we're going to do what's called in papio. It's French for in paper. We've got Baja grouper, some fennel, and some oyster mushrooms. And let's get to work, shall we? Yeah. Put just a little bit of garlic in there. Use the back of your spoon like so, about a teaspoon. A little bit of sherry. Got your sherry right there. And then a little bit of high quality extra virgin olive oil. We're of course using the good stuff today. And then we've got smooth Dijon mustard, about a tablespoon. Don't put it all, very good, stop, stop. There you go, perfect. Salt and pepper. And we're of course using fresh ground pepper and we're gonna stir it up real good. Now what kind of dressing is it? This is just a, a really basic Dijon vinaigrette. This could actu actually go on a salad with the ad addition of some vinegar instead of all the sherry. Now, we need to cut up this piece of fennel here. And what is fennel? Fennel is a, a root ve vegetable, and it tastes like licorice. We've got oyster mushrooms. These are from Miami, Oklahoma. And then red and yellow onions. So why are you using red and yellow onions? I like the full flavor profile. Red onions have a little bit more robust flavor. Yellow onions have a little sweeter flavor. And you get the best of both worlds with both onions. Now bring that over here and mix it up. Now is when the fun begins, right? Mm -hmm. So, in papio, you got your little paper cut into a heart. This is very important. So put the crease up here at the top of your cutting board like so. And we're gonna take our ingredients not all of the liquid, but some. And just put them right there on the parchment paper, staying up close to that crease. Perfect. Now we've got our Baja grouper. So why here. do you use Baja grouper? Obviously from Baja, California, probably Baja, Mexico, in this case, a little further south. Uh, meaty, flaky steak-like but very mild flavor high in amino acids one where you're going to use mild flavored things to create a cohesive whole and a, a piece of salmon or a tuna might dominate these flavors where there'd be no balance so we're going to season with salt and pepper i in my salt and we're going to put grouper right here with that flat side there you go perfect Pat of butter for you. Thank you. You know what I'm gonna do, Remy? I'm gonna cut yours down a little bit so it's not quite so square. And one for me. Now we're trying to eat healthy, but we don't want to lose all our flavor, so we're gonna use about a half a tablespoon of butter, 50 calories, five grams of fat. It's gonna add a richness and texture to it without being ridiculously unhealthy. So start over at the top of your heart, start making your folds. So, yep, and just continue on around trying to keep the edges square. So are all the ingredients essential in this? You could mix this up pretty much any way you want. You want to stick with fish and poultry. Mammals don't really lend themselves to steaming that well. Um, you could exchange, say, portobello mushrooms, sun-dried tomatoes for the oyster mushrooms fennel. Uh, Broccoli and carrots, always a good call. So we're gonna make sure it's sealed up super tight. And this is really the key with Empapiotas. These creases are gonna seal off this bag so that all the flavors stay in here. And the, the 
fish cooks in the steam created by the mushrooms and the fennel. Mm -hmm. So, put that up on your sizzle platter. Oh, see, I was all harping on you and mine came apart. Okay. And then I've got a non-stick spray that's going to go right on the top. And the key here is that as this product cooks and creates the steam, the bag puffs up like a balloon. And if we don't grease the top of it, it'll get real brittle and split and let out all that great flavor. So how long are we cooking this for? We're going to go 10 to 12 minutes in a 500 degree oven. This is a stone bottom oven set at 500 degrees. It's super, super hot. So I want you to be real careful when you're putting this in here. So we're gonna slide ours back a little bit. And then, because this is a pretty technical cooking method, I've got my, my ringers here that I did earlier. We're gonna put those in the oven too. All right, see you in 10 to 15 minutes. All right, Remy, there are three things you have to have to be a great chef. One is a sharp knife. Check. Two is a clean uniform. And three, you've got to have a French accent. Say we. Oui. We. Oui. No, no. Say O U I. We. Oui. We. Oui. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. It's getting closer. That's great. That's actually that ending. Hi. What's your name? And how would you like me to sign your book? This sign feeds your pants, please. I like your style, kid. The Culinary Kid. Remy, let me tell you about a few of the Thermador appliances here on your set. Right here we've got a 36 inch induction cooktop with five induction elements and also the largest induction element. Cool. What's this? Well, over here we've got our triple combination professional wall oven. You've got convection microwave, you've got a convection wall oven, and also you have a awesome. warming. What's this? Well, here is our 30 inch masterpiece double wall oven. You've got convection in both ovens, and you also have electronic controls. Wow, Thermador really knows its stuff. Well, we like to fulfill the needs of our clients. Do you make trampolines? Because I could really use one of those. Um, I can get back to you on that. So we've got our unhappy oats out of the oven. Now it's time to eat. You set yours right here. You want to take the spatula here, put it right on the plate. Ready? There we go. So now, we've got steam. That's the good part right there. That looks good. Smell it? Mmm. really good in this. It adds a lot of flavor. And the juices from the sauce and the vegetables and the fish, it's all, it's all great put together. Did you try a mushroom yet? So if you didn't like mushrooms, we'll see how you feel about oyster mushrooms. In the show of solidarity, I'm going to eat one too since I don't like mushrooms. Mm. Mm. Good, aren't they? It's really good. That's the only mushroom I eat. <laughs> I'll call it a victory if it's not the last. Chef Tim, thank you very much for inviting me, and I can't wait to put this technique to practice. Good luck. We're at Bodine Seafood Market, and I'm here with Joe. Hey, Remy. Joe's going to tell us about their products. So, what do we got here, Joe? We got fresh fish. In fact, it's so fresh, we go to the airport twice a day to pick it up. But before we get into that, let's talk about the market. The market's been in business since 1967. We started out with this a small case, and uh, it took off really well. So we decided we got all this fish. Why not open up a restaurant? And uh, in fact, it's one of the nicest finest restaurants here in town. And we take a lot of pride in what we do. We strive for the best for our customers. In fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. We have this really nice mahi over here with a nice yellow line down the side. That's fresh, never been frozen. Wow, that's big. And we have uh, bronzinis. Those come from Mediterranean Sea. Those are really good, just uh, grilling them whole. And we have these uh, sole and a fluke. They're, they're cousins, they're very similar to flounders. Uh, just saute them or bake them. Really nice flaky fish. And we have uh, over here we have uh, fresh cotton haddock. Uh, the cotton haddock's really known for fish and chips. So can you get the cod or haddock from anywhere else but Iceland? You can. Uh, we've had cod from the Atlantic and also the uh, 
the East Coast, but it's just not the same. The Iceland is the best cod there is, and that's what most people prefer. And here we have uh, tuna. It's real nice, steaky. Uh, it's really known for sushi. Uh, that right there, you could eat raw. It's really good. So, what's Escalar? Escalar, uh, it's really a mackerel. Uh, Escalar is just another name for it. Uh, it kind of got a cheese look texture. And uh, it's real high in omega-3 oils. It's one of the richest fish there is. So, what about the swordfish? The swordfish is a nice uh, grilling fish. Uh, they're only caught wild. They're really hard to farm raise. And uh, they're really steaky, kind of like a pork chop. And uh, it's very mild, not fishy at all. How many types of snappers are there? There are several different kinds. There's a Brazilian yellowtail snapper, and there's an also a paca paca, which comes from Hawaii. And, but everybody wants the uh, Gulf red snapper, the American red snapper. That's the true snapper. Very nice, flaky, excellent for blackening. And once in a while, we get people to come in and buy the whole fish. Is there such thing as Pacific salmon? There's several Pacific salmons. There's the king salmon, there's the sockeye salmon, there's the ivory king salmon, there's the coho salmon. There's several different kinds. Uh, but this one's an Atlantic salmon. It's farm raised in British Columbia. Why do they call it rainbow trout? Why can't it just be trout? They call it rainbow trout because when it's fresh out of the water, you can see the colors down the side. There's a red, pink, and blue color. Kind of like the rainbow. So, are there any other kinds of catfish? Well, there's several different kinds of catfish. There's the this is the channel catfish, and there's also blue catfish. Uh, but most of the catfish that people sell is going to be the channel. It's the best tasting, mildest, not as fishy. So let's check out the other stuff. Now, these scallops are huge. Can you tell me about them? Yes, those are uh, from Massachusetts. Those are also called uh, dry pack scallops, which that me means there's no preservatives no water added to them. When you cook them, they won't shrink like the ones from the grocery store does. So what are PEI mussels? Those are from Prince Edward Island. Those are very good. Just boil them with white wine, butter, garlic, and eat it with some bread. Really good. So what about these little net clams? Those are known for chowders. And also people just shuck them and you can eat them raw. They're that fresh. Wow, you know a lot about fish. So, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for about 12 years. That means you're pretty much an expert, right? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> so, what are you looking to make? Well, I need a light, flaky fish. Well, let's walk down here. I'll take a look and see. Well, I've got several flaky white fish. I've got the sole. That's very good. And I also have the haddock. But I'd probably go with the cod. It's very available and it's going to be really good. Well, then I'll take some cod. Okay, then I'll wrap that up for you. I should do it, Remy. Thanks for all your help, Joe. You're welcome, anytime. Commercial break. Time to pay some bills, people. Stick around. All right, Remy, there are three things you have to have to be a great chef. One is a sharp knife. Check. Two is a clean uniform. Check. And three, you've got to have a French accent. Say, we. Oui. We. Oui. No, no, say, O U I. We. Oui. We. Oui. Oh, we'll, we'll work on that later. It's getting closer. That's great. That's actually that end of it. Yeah. Hi, what's your name? And how would you like me to sign your book? This sign feature your pants it, please. I like your style, kid. And look at this, the Culinary Kid. Remy, let me tell you about a few of the Thermador appliances here on your set. Right here we've got a 36 inch induction cooktop with five induction elements, and also the largest induction element. Cool. what's this? Well, over here we've got our triple combination professional wall oven. You've got convection microwave, you've got a convection wall oven, and also you have a warming... Awesome. Tr What's this? Well, here is our 30-inch masterpiece double wall oven. You've got convection in both ovens, and you also have electronic controls. Wow, Thermo really knows its stuff. 
well, we like to fulfill the needs of our clients. Do you make trampolines? Because I could really use one of those. Um, I can get back to you on that. Now, we're back at the test kitchen, and today, I'm working on Ooh, on copy oat. Good heavy pan. On copy oat That's a good start. is basically steaming in parchment paper. On poppy oat means in paper. Okay, so today's menu we have cod on poppy oat with a green salad. So let's get started. First, I'm going to make my sauce for my on poppy oat. So now, all I'm going to do is just add a little bit of extra so virgin olive oil. She's cooking with extra okay. virgin olive oil, which has positives and negatives. Okay. It does impart a fair and amount then, of flavor. It also has a much lower smoking point. I'm just going to turn so it'll burn as opposed to canola oil, which has a higher smoking and point, I'm less going flavor, a little more shallots. inert. Some cherry tomatoes. Mushrooms. I love the fact she didn't put any garlic in there. Everybody wants to put garlic in everything. Some you got to pick your battles. Especially with fish. And some pepper. Just gonna throw this around. And I just want this to saute a little bit. And while it's sauteing, I'm just gonna talk about on poppy oat a little bit. Well, on poppy oat is just really easy to make. I'm gonna have to teach her to flip that to pan. And it doesn't yeah, really take a lot of time. It took me about 15 seconds to learn how to flip and a pan. Thing about it My is first that omelet bar when I was 18. It was. Okay, uh, well. Flip okay. or fail. <laughs> okay. heating up. Either wear it or serve so, it. Now, I'm just going to add some flour. Stir it up a little bit. Boy, it does smell good here. We're going to get all, oops, a little messy. Okay. Now, I'm going to add some fat free, half and half. Okay. I would question whether you'd want to cook your vegetables ahead of time. It seems to me if you put them in the parchment paper at 400 degrees plus for 15 minutes, they're going to cook during that process and impart all that flavor to the fish instead of the sauce. So if, if were, it were me, I would do the vegetables raw and the papillote and do the sauce separately. Reduce it down to make it thick, okay. and then pour the sauce over the vegetables now and the fish. Now let's talk a little bit about on poppy oat. Did you know that the oldest restaurant in the U.S. today made on poppy oat popular with their famous dish, pompano on poppy oat? Isn't that a funny word to pronounce? It's kind of hard to say too. And the great well, thing about poppy oat is there's no pre presentation. The bag again, is the presentation. So now I'm just gonna turn the heat off, and I'm just gonna add. Some fresh parsley. Add the herbs in last, that's good. And some basil. They're real delicate, if all that flavor okay. will cook out, they'll turn brown. You've got no eye appeal, no flavor. Just gonna this up a bit. And you wanna add your fresh herbs right before you're getting ready to make your on poppy oat. So then they, they stay fresh. Okay, so now I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. Pretty organized for a little girl. Okay, so now let's make our on poppy oat. Clean kitchen. Okay, so first I got my baking pan. And now stuff up. I got my parchment paper, which I put in the shape of a heart. So now what I'm gonna do is just uh, add some canola Better spray nice oil. The and spray there. it at the bottom of this so the fish and the doesn't stick. Spray. Now I'm going to add some Swiss Maybe chard. You can take rimming out with some spray paint and get and like that, that good motion sauce. going so she can see what she's doing. Sauce in there. And then I'm going to add my fish in here. And then some more sauce. Get some. A little bit of fresh herbs in there and everything else. Oh, messy. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just fold this over and turn it. And then, it seems like that now this is kind is of a hard part. Sturdy you are stuff going we have to at the restaurant, start out make this folding it and little, like little. So then you just keep folding it 
And you want your fold to be really tight so the fish will cook and it is sealed. Might and so to get some of steam that. will kind of cook the fish inside. Okay, so I'm going to try to finish this off. Get that, that piece fold in there. And if you think there's a piece that you folded that's a little big and that doesn't look airtight, you can just fold it twice. So I'm just going to get that. Okay. Fold that. Now, the, my best part is just to twist that at the end so yeah, that's, it that's all stays new. together. And now, we're just going to put doing get my spray and spray it on top a little bit so it so the paper can expand without ripping so the f fish can cook. So now, I'm going to do the process again. And I'm going to move that over a little bit. I'm going to get... And she oh, actually gets through these two spray. pretty quickly, all things considered. A little more. My Swiss chard. My sauce. Get more in there. My fish. More sauce. Maybe this when I put this on the menu, I can have Remy come down for yeah. six fifty an hour and okay. bang out about a hundred of these for me. And then just gonna fold it. really want this to be sealed because if it's not sealed then your fish probably is going to turn out raw and raw fish isn't the best thing to eat so gonna pompano and papilla the together. classic french dish that was a big one. Okay. club 21 okay. in new york city every country club okay. across america okay. So uh, Pompano is okay. actually fairly Twist rare, it. not something you see a lot. We never, very rarely get it. We very rarely put it on the menu just because we get it in such limited amounts. And then this is going in the oven delicate at 400 fish. degrees for about 15 minutes. So, let's just put it in the oven. <laughs> we'll check back on that in about 15 minutes and we'll see how it's coming. What's your name? And how would you like me to sign your book? This sign feature prints on the place. I like your style, kid. It was this, the Culinary Kid. Remy, let me tell you about a few of the Thermador appliances here on your set. Right here we've got a 36 inch induction cooktop with five induction elements, and also the largest induction element. Cool. What's this? Well, over here we've got our triple combination professional wall oven. You've got convection microwave, you've got a convection wall oven, and also you have a warm awesome. What's this? Well, here is our 30 inch masterpiece double wall oven. You've got convection in both ovens, and you also have electronic controls. Wow, Thermador really know its stuff. Well, we like to fulfill the needs of our clients. Do you make trampolines? Because I really use one of those. Um, I can get back to you on that. Looks good. It doesn't look like the bags really poofed up that much, but I can't really talk. The ones we did so at the restaurant didn't either. So let's look at what I paired with it. This is a green salad. It has frise lettuce, babe lettuce, pistachios, green apples, and some Parmesan cheese. And the dressing is great. It has olive oil, lime juice, and some white wine vinegar. And always remember, you need to pour this right before you serve it, or else you'll have a soggy salad. And you don't want a soggy salad. Now for the French bread. I think the only I critique I'd have for her is maybe some, something and the sauce, on that salad to give it some color. It's all green. And some balsamic vinegar with some salt and pepper. Okay, so now I'm just going to plate one of my on poppy oats. So now I'm just going to use some scissors to cut this open. Okay. Boy, does this smell good. Looks good. I can't I wait to get out there and try really it. really likes it. For this recipe and more, check out my website, theculinarykid.com. Time for the chef presentation. Now, this is a pass or fail, so wish me luck. And 
back with us is Chef Tim Richards. He has 25 years of experience and enjoys playing with his kids, as well as all types of music. Chef Tim, inspired by the dish you made me, I made cod on poppy oat with a green salad and some French bread with olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and some salt and pepper. I hope you enjoy. So it's lunchtime. Yes. So where did you get the cod? Um, from you, actually. Yes. I see mushrooms and tomatoes and lemon, fresh basil. Is that what I'm looking at? Yes. It smells delicious. Some basil and parsley and some shallots in it. And then I just mixed it together with some fat-free half and half mm -hmm. and some flour. Oil? Did you use any oil in it? Oh, yeah. Extra virgin olive oil. It's delicious. I would say uh, my only critique is that I personally feel like it could use a little bit more salt. But I also feel like chefs over season things, that we want salt shakers to be on the table for decoration only. So uh, that's purely subjective and outside of me, it really doesn't mean anything. Now talk to me about the green salad a little bit. Um, I got some frizz lettuce, some bib lettuce, some granny apples, some pistachios, let me see, and got some cheese in there too. What kind of cheese is that? Parmesan, um, Parmesan cheese, yeah. Yep. And it's just really simple and the dressing really just makes it. The dressing is just white wine vinegar, olive oil, and lime juice. Mm. What makes it are the pistachios. Pistachios are awesome. Mm -hmm. um, what I love about this salad is its simplicity. I think that a lot of times, particularly chefs, try to make salads into something that they're not. Mm -hmm. um, it's not rocket science. I love the pistachios. I think that one of the key components of a, of a really good salad is the interplay with all the different components. And if you know your components, you don't need 15 of them. And it, You've got crunch, you've got acidity, you've got a little bitterness with the frisé. It's really delicious, and of course, cheese. I love cheese, so. Now, French bread. Do you know what kind of olive oil we're using? It's extra virgin olive oil. First press, and then, of course, balsamic vinegar. This is the Italian peasant breakfast I oftentimes partake in at my restaurant. Delicious. <laughs> So you feel like you could do this any day of the week now? Great thing about Impapiote is that there's no presentation. You just put it on a plate, open a bag, and, and eat it. This is delicious. It's well done. I'm going to have to say you passed. Thank you. No problem. I'm going to keep eating. That's it for this week's show. I can't wait for next week's lesson, right here on The Culinary Kit, where I'll be getting this week's ingredients for oh, no. Well, I'll be getting the ingredients for this week's lesson. Ready? I need to remember that. Okay, let's try it one more time. Sorry. Oh, you want me to move? I... On Poppy Oat. Ugh. Pompano on Poppy Oat. Yeah. Oh. Hats off. Hats <laughs> off.